On today's lesson, we will take a look at the application of parametric equations. We're going to see how we can use parametric equations to answer certain questions. So let's take a look at some examples now. Under example one, the situation that we have is that a baseball is hit in a park and the pad of the baseball can be represented with the following parametric equations. So here we have the pad of this baseball and this is where the baseball gets hit. In other words, this is where t equals zero. So when t equals zero, this is where the baseball gets hit. And once it gets hit, this is the curvature that the baseball follows. And then this is what's going to hit the ground. Now the question that we want to answer is how long is the baseball in the air? So if this is when it gets hit, and this is when it gets, when uh, so this is when the baseball gets hit, and this is where the baseball hits the ground, we want to see how long did it took for the ball to get hit all the way until it hits the ground. So notice that when we talk about how long, pretty much we're looking for an answer in terms of time. How long did it hit, uh, how long did it took for the ball to hit the ground? But now, if this is the curvature of the pad, and this curvature has been defined by these two parametric equations, perhaps we want to take a look at the function of YLT because YLT will give you the vertical displacement. In terms of time, So if we want to answer the question, how long is the ball on the air? We can think about it about how long did it took for the ball to get a height of zero? Because once the ball hits the ground or once the ball has a height of zero, then we know that whatever time it took to get there, that's the time that the ball got on the air. So to properly answer this question, all we got to do is just take a look at the vertical displacement. So y of t will give you the vertical displacement in terms of time. So let's take a look at the function of y of t. And we want to see when is this function equal to zero. Because once this function is equal to zero, once my displacement is my vertical displacement is equal to zero, we're trying to find out this point. So if we if we know that in here, once you get hit, this is time of zero, all I want to see how long did it took for my height to go back to zero. And this is exactly what we're looking at. This function, we're saying, look, I'm going to take in my vertical displacement and I want to know where my vertical displacement is equal to zero. In other words, when it actually hits the ground. So if we solve this function, we can solve it algebraically. But since we're talking about graphs, might as well just graph it and get a good estimate. So let's go back to our decimal activity. So here we have the actual function that we started in the problem. And now here's my function for the vertical displacement. Here's the function for my vertical displacement. Oops, I think I zoomed on too much. So here's my function for the vertical displacement. And I notice that this y of t has two possible zeros. One, a negative 0.46, and one at 3.39. So here we have two possible answers. Either t, the value of t, either the value of t is equivalent to point negative, negative uh, point 0.46. So negative 0 0.046 or at 3.39. So now at this point, we have to think about the scenario because remember that T represents time. So I know that my vertical displacement will be of a value of zero whenever T 
has this value or whenever three is 3.39. But since we're talking about time, there is no such thing as going back in time when you actually hit the ball. So the correct answer here, it would just be at 3.39. Now notice that the problem doesn't say if it's minutes or seconds or hours, but let's just assume that T is in terms of seconds. So in other words, at 3.39 seconds. So once the ball gets hit, it travels all this distance and exactly at T equals 3.39, it will hit the ground. In other words, this is how long the ball was on the air. Now, if you want to answer the question, how far from the ground or from the home plate does the ball land? So we know one thing for sure. We know that it is exactly at this point where it hits the ground. And the time when it hits the ground, it's exactly at 3.39. So to answer the question, how far from the home plate does the ball land? We want to measure all this distance from the moment that it hits the ground all the way until it actually hits the ground. So I'm sorry, from the moment that it hits the base all the way until it hits the ground, we want to measure this distance. This is the question that we're trying to answer here. How far from the home plate does the ball land? But now, if y of t gets me the vertical displacement, then x of t will give me the horizontal displacement. But we do have an equation for x of t, because notice that x of t is being defined at 70 cosine of 50 times t. But I know that when the time is 3.39, the ball hits the ground. So therefore, I really am just trying to see what is the vertical displacement at the sec at, at th uh, whenever t is 3.39. That's exactly what we're trying to answer here. So what is my horizontal displacement after 3.39 seconds? And that's something that we can use x of t for. Oops, I think I missed a zero there. Times 3.39. And if we use our graphing calculator to find this value, this should give us an approximation. And the approximation, it's about 229. And let's assume that we're talking about feet now. So what this is saying is that at this point, exactly, we have traveled 229 feet, which it seems about right, because if this is a pad, this 229 seems about, uh, this. I'm sorry, this point seems to be about 2.29. So this point is specifically, that would be a 229, 0. Now let's actually double check that that makes sense. Let's go back to our function. So this is the pad of the, of the baseball ball. And let's see if it's true. Does it really hit the ground at 2.29? Let's see, let's keep zooming in. Seems to be at right. You know, this is 2.20, it's just about 2. Uh, 229, which seems to be right. So notice that we have properly answered the question now. The most important thing to understand is that any time that we're working with parametric equations, x of t will always give you the horizontal displacement. So we can use x of t to talk about questions regarding distance from a point. y of t will give you the vertical displacement. So y of t, it's an equation that we can use to answer questions about how long the ball has been in the air or any questions that you need to use some kind of a vertical displacement on. Let's take a look at one more example. Here, we have a question that states a cannon shoots from the ground at an angle 37 degrees with an initial velocity of 300 feet per second 
the trajectory of the cannonball can be represented by the parametric equations. So now notice that we here we have two parametric equations, one that deals with the horizontal displacement and one that deals with the vertical displacement. And now the question is, when is the cannonball 500 feet away? So let's understand this graph. So if we were to graph this, uh, this scenario, this is the graph that we would have obtained. So this is when t equals zero. So whenever the ball gets shot, so this is the path that is going to follow. And what we try to answer in question A is when is the ball 500 feet away? So we want to answer how long did it took the ball to go from this point all the way to this point? But notice that if we want to answer the question, when is the ball 500 feet away? We want to take a look at the horizontal displacement. Because when we talk about far, we usually talk about left to right. We talk about distance. So if you want to know when the ball is 500 feet away, we're going to be taking a look at our horizontal displacement. And more precisely, we want to see when is my horizontal displacement 500. So this is my horizontal displacement. If I want to know when it's a ball 500 feet away, all I'm pretty much asking is, at what time is my horizontal displacement going to have a value of 500? So let's see. Now that we have set up such an equation, notice that we want to see when is the ball. We want to answer questions in terms of time. So at this point, now that we have such an equation, we can just solve for t. And to properly solve for t, we can divide by 300 cosine of 37 on both sides. So now we know that t has a value of 500 over 300 cosine of 37. And if we use our graphing calculator, we would obtain approx an approximation. So I shouldn't say it's equal. So we got a good approximation. And this approximation is of 2.18 seconds. Let me actually write this a little bit better. It doesn't look nice. So what we have answered here is that it takes about 200, I'm sorry, it takes about 2.18 seconds for me to travel this much. And to travel this much, we will have a 500 distance from when the ball was hit or when the cannon was shoot. Now to take a look at question two, it states, what if the cannon is four feet above the ground? How will this affect the equation of the pad of the cannonball? Well, this cannonball, what the, the original scenario that we had in this cannonball problem was that it was shot from the ground. So now the question is, why don't we put like a little platform that is four feet above the ground? And that's what we should imagine that it's about here. What if we shoot the cannonball 400, I'm sorry, four feet above the ground? How is this going to affect the equations or the parametric equations for the pad of the, of the cannonball. Well, let's think about this for a second. So if this is my point, if this is four feet above the ground, then notice that my initial horizontal displacement doesn't change because the X value from this point to this point, it doesn't change. So therefore the X parametric equation is not gonna get affected by it. So my parametric equation for x, it is still the same that we had initially in our problem. But now for y of t, for y of t, if I'm going to be moving my initial point four feet up, therefore, I need to indicate that by just adding a four to the original equation, because this equation was meant for whenever it was on the ground. So if I'm going to be putting my 
cannon four feet above. I just need to modify my equation by saying that I need to start by just adding four units, assuming that this equation represents feet. So all we got to do at this point, and let's just rewrite our observation. So 300 sine of 37 degrees t minus 16 t squared plus 4. So now notice that my parametric equations, they're going to change a little bit since now we're not starting from the ground, but we're starting at a platform that is 4 feet above the ground. Lastly, the last thing that we want to see is how can we use this information now? Because now, if we take a look at question number three, it states, use our new equation, which this is going to be what I refer to as the new equation or the new parametric equations, to answer the following question. So there is a wall that is 2,500 feet away with the height of 120 feet. Does the cannonball that gets represented by this parametric equations, is it going to clear the wall? So let's picture what's what's going on here. So here, we're going to have our cannonball, which is going to be about four feet above the ground. And we know that it's going to follow a trajectory going this way. And now we're going to say, look, we're going to have a wall. So let's assume that this is the wall. And what do we know about this wall? Well, what we know about this wall is that it's 2,500 feet away. So the distance from this point to this point, it's going to be 2,500. I think I wrote an extra zero there. Let me just erase that. And in addition, we also know that this wall, it has a height of 120 feet. And the question is, is this new equation, is the ball that gets represented by this new set of equations, is it going to go beyond the wall or is it going to just hit the wall? Is this ball going to go over the wall? That's pretty much the question that we want to answer. Well, let's think about what we know so far. One way that you might want to think about this problem is by taking a look at it this way. So if, if my horizontal displacement is 2,500, which is about this, then what is my height? If we're able to answer this question, if this height happens to be more than 120, then we know that it's going to go beyond the wall. And if this height is below 120, then we know it's not going to go beyond the wall. So let's try to answer this question. So if my horizontal displacement has a value of 2,500, then what is my height? Well, let's take a look at the horizontal displacement. The horizontal displacement is given to us by x of t. So let's see when is my horizontal displacement or at what time is my horizontal displacement going to have a value of 2,500? Because we want to see what at what time is my ball going to reach a horizontal displacement of 2,500. Well, for this, Let's solve for t, so divided by 300, cosine of 37 on both sides. Now this goes away. So now we know that the value of t, it's about 10.43 seconds. So all we know so far is this. It takes about 10 point 43 seconds for the ball to have a horizontal displacement of 2,500. So now that we know that exactly when the seconds are 
I have a horizontal displacement of 2,500. Perhaps I want to see what is the vertical displacement at exactly at this time. Because if the vertical displacement at this time, 10.43 seconds, it's more than 120, then we know that we're going to go above the wall. So let's answer that now. So what is going to be my vertical displacement when the time is 10.43? So, oops, let me just indicate that this is for y. So we want to see the horizontal displacement when the time is 10.43. So all we got to do is just plug it into the course vertical displacement equation. So that's going to be 300 times the sine of 37 times t, but right now we're looking at the t to be 10.43, minus 16 times t squared, where t is 10.43, plus 4. And if we plug this on our graphing calculator, we should get a value of approximately 146, oops, 6. 146.52. So now we know that when the t value is 10.43, I have a coordinate point, and this coordinate point is going to be 2500 and 146.52. So now notice that, yes, if this is the situation that the ball follows, then exactly at 2,500, my height is going to be of 146, and 146 is definitely more than 120. So the question, I'm sorry, the answer for this question is, yes, the ball will clear the wall. So if we follow it correctly, it should just, you know, just go above the wall. I hope that this was helpful. These were just two small examples for you to see how we can use parametric equations. But the most important thing here is to note that x of t will always give you the horizontal displacement and y of t will give you the vertical displacement. And we can use a combination of them to, to find the time and to answer questions regarding height or to answer questions regarding distance.